Welcome, everyone, to the T Rap Show with your host, Trapper Goldsmith, where we showcase elite athletes and sport individuals with their inspiring stories and rise to glory in their pursuit of everlasting greatness. I'm excited for today. We have my man, professional football player, S.A. Murabure, who was a first round pick in the CFL draft and has almost over a decade in the league. Uh, So you're going to hear some really good CFL stories. He's overcome injuries. He's won a great cup with the Stamps, and you're going to get it all here live today. We're going to talk about how straight talent will only get you so far. How big the jump is really from university ball to pro ball and and the mindset behind being your best, overcoming injury. And you're going to hear it all. So listen in. Essay, my man, welcome. Welcome. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate the uh, the invite. And again, honor to be here, man. Right on, man. So let's let's talk about growing up. I understand your mom was like a hundred percent against football. Said no, no way, no way, not playing football. Yeah, those were pretty much her exact words. Uh, but uh, a little bit off on the accent. She said, "No way, y'all not, <laughs> not at all, not on <laughs> my roof." <laughs> so your family, your family's from Nigeria. Yes. Your first generation Canadian. Yes, sir. So Nigeria is not football. It's soccer. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, it, it is football, but it's, you know. Yeah. It's called football. <laughs> it's called yeah. football. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Right, right. So what kind of, what, yeah, like, did you start playing soccer at a, at a young age and, and then just, like, started growing? Because you're, you're a pretty big dude. Yeah, basically. Uh, so I'm the firstborn of three. Um, I got a younger brother and a younger sister. Um, But yeah, we all basically started the foundations of of our athletic abilities come from our dad um, who played. He played a bit of pro ball in Germany. Um, Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So he played a bit of of, uh, semi pro ball in Germany. And then when they came here, had us, obviously they passed down the tradition. So I played soccer from I want to say like U5 up until about U16. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah. So then, but then that's when I started to kind of get into my, my body a little bit. So at about 16, I say I was about six, one, six, two, two twenty ish about like, yeah, you know, nearing that size. So, um, I was constantly getting cards. Um, I couldn't run as much as I, as I could when I was a, a lot younger cause I played midfield. Um, so I just slowly kind of progressed back. So I, I, I was playing d- uh, defense. And getting so many cards, uh, I thought, you know what, let's let's switch it up. And uh, I, I moved over to basketball because you know. Oh, height, okay. So, yeah, so the height came a little bit. Um, I had some influences like uh, Vince Carter, Michael Jordan, uh, Paul Pierce, uh, Kevin Garnett. So you know, I played I played the four, I played the five, a little bit of the three, um, as far as basketball terms go. But again, started growing a little more. Uh, fouling out of game, stuff like that. <laughs> Just uh, decided to look uh, towards something a little more aggressive. So something where you could actually hit guys and, and it'd be celebrated, not penalized. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, so what, a lot of points. So what was it with your mom not wanting you to play? Was it like she, just the danger of the sport or she didn't understand the game? Or you'd be a big disappointment if you didn't play football uh, (laughs) and and not actual. uh. So basically, it was like a combination of all of that. Um, I think uh, she would have been fine if I I said, you know, I want to stick with basketball or obviously if I want to stick with soccer. Um, But essentially, it was really just the danger. The Mm -hmm. danger. You know, I'm watching the NFL. Like, I'm watching guys like Ray Lewis, uh, Troy Palomalu, Ben Erlacher, those guys, like, that's when I first started kind of watching football. And that's what she saw. And Mm. obviously when, you know, mothers, they see, uh, they see violence or certain things happening. It's a little heightened um, through their eyes. So I understand. Yeah. 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 And she's a mom. That's their job, right? To worry. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) I raced, I raced motocross coming up. So I raced motocross probably, I was about 16, uh, raced all over um, the U.S. and Canada. 
uh, and I had several national championships, but my mom, like she, so she'd always video record us, which, which was awesome. I got like <laughs> VHS of VHS of, of us racing when we were kids. Yeah. Uh, but she was like, that was the only way I could keep my sanity was filming. Cause then you're focused kind of on filming and, and not if my kid's going to uh, break both his arms or not. So that was how she, <laughs> she managed it, but she was always on pins and needles. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Part of okay, the man, we know, like, we know sport is progressive. It's it's getting to a whole different level where, you know, kids are getting groomed from the time they're three, four years old. Now, you yep. didn't start playing football till later in life, and you played multiple sports. How, what's, what's your opinion on that? Like, is it a disadvantage? Is it an advantage to play multiple sports and kind of start, you know, later in life? Give me your opinion on that essay. Uh, so my personal opinion on that, um, and not not only just because I, I took this route, but I do believe, like I truly, truly believe that being a multi-sport athlete in whatever sport you end up in, it's the perfect way to go. Um, mm. I feel like um, when I was playing basketball, the only reason I was as good as I was, um, not saying I was the best or anything, but um, I, I do believe, or I do remember being one of the only big men that any time that we had switches on defenders, like I could switch with anybody. Like I was covering point guards, uh, shooting guards. Mm -hmm. I was covering big, I was covering, it didn't matter what it was. And I think that helps, or sorry, my, um, my soccer playing abilities or when I played soccer, that helped with that. Um, and then now in my football career, because I played soccer and I played basketball and I played a bunch of other sports, um, I played volleyball. I did track. So I was in, I was in high jump shot put. I ran a bit of the 100 and 400. Um, I like to say it cause I competed in them, but let's not, let's not dive into that. <laughs> the running aspect. It wasn't, it wasn't the Usain Bolt kind of <laughs> type running. Oh, definitely not. Uh, very far. <laughs> <from>. <laughs> um, but it but probably made you more versatile as, as a football player, having exactly. all of those. Exactly. And, you know, obviously I'm not the best, uh, but I do have uh, the very high. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I, I I do look at my my skill set uh, very highly. So, you know. So you I and I agree with you. So I played multiple. I, well, I raced up until 16 and then I played volleyball, track and field. I actually had, you know, scholarships for for that and, and golf. But I think. Like my opinion is, is you, it, it really diversifies you as a, an, as an athlete, but in the same sense, right? Like you've been competing, it's the mindset, right? That they, they, you've been competing since such a, a small or a young age that, you know, you can transfer that mindset. You still have 10 years experience competing and, and training. And, and that mindset is, is really, cause you, you don't really blossom into uh, a phenomenal player or a professional level player uh, until later in life anyway. Exactly. So, right. so let's, let's kind of talk about that. You, you were a decent university player yeah. and then all of a sudden you went to a great university player to getting drafted in the first round in the CFL. Talk about that, that transition essay where you kind of go from good I mean, and, and we say good because we've both played at a professional level. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the average person would have looked at you and they're like, man, he's, he's a freak of nature. He's so good. But, mm -hmm. but at a, an elite level, you were, you were good. And then you went to the, the next level. You really brought your game. What was, what, what did that take? What was the mindset behind that? Man. Um, when I think back to, to those times, like at Laurier, um, and even just the first transition that you spoke of, like from being good to great. Yeah. Um, I remember coming into my rookie camp at Laurier thinking, okay, I made the first step. Um, Cause we said it earlier, um, I didn't play a lot of high school football. I played grade nine, grade 10. I hung the, the cleats up cause it was too, too much for me. Uh, stuck with basketball and then I played in grade 12 and grade 13. Um, I went back for a half a semester to get film and to get into university. But I kind of just, it was something that I just jumped on. Like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at football. Let's see where it takes me. 
So mm. like I was saying, I, I jumped into my first rookie camp and I get in there and I see all sorts of guys. I think there was like maybe 110, 120 of us. Um, some guys I recognized, obviously, from um, uh, just from playing uh, football in Mississauga, the GTA and stuff like that. Um, like summer league football, we played against a bunch of different cities and you, you run into guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, you start sizing yourself up with uh, your peers um, and then the vets come to camp and then it's like, holy shit, you know? Um, and I remember my very first rep was against, uh, I forget his last name, but Big Donnie. He was, the, he was our star offensive tackle. I think he was in his fifth year um, as I was in my first year. I think he was like 6'8", maybe 320 pounds. Just a mammoth of a human being. And uh, <laughs> very confident, young essay. Uh, <laughs> line up on the edge i'm like oh i'm about to give him i'm about to light this dude I'm about up to kill this guy Coke <laughs> about to be hooray and i'm about to chest bump with my teammates and obviously the opposite of that happens um i remember i take my first step and he jumps at me and he basically choke slammed me through the ground and it <laughs> it kind of you know it woke me up uh and i kind of sat in my room and like made it like i kind of had a conversation with myself like hey do you really want to do this um and I thought about the hard work it took for me to first of all get my grades up to get into university from high mm. school uh I'm the first born uh, uh first generation Canadian I'm thinking I got all these things in my mind and I'm thinking you know what let's just take it day by day you know um and uh I had a really solid group of guys that I had met at Laurier um some guys that were in my class. Uh, we actually, all of us, we got drafted together or signed to a team and uh, went into training camps professionally together too. So uh, without the help of those guys, uh, the encouragement of my parents and stuff like that, uh, I don't think uh, that transition would have, would have made, uh, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have went further than that first day, you know? So a yeah. lot of, a lot of internalizing, um, my own like goals like what do you want what do, right. you, what do you really need mm. why are you here and then you know thinking of your parents like yeah they sent you to school to make them proud you know um, yeah and something that you always hold near and dear to yourself as a, as a child of, of immigrant parents especially from Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> that's good I I'm glad yeah man you you I like how you touched on that if uh, I've I've read uh, David Goggins book and he talks about um, like Hell Week, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. for for the Navy SEALs, and and the whole point of Hell Week is not to like physically test you, not to see how good a shape you're in. It's to break every guy down uh, to a point where they just they know with a hundred percent certainty why they're there, a hundred percent why they're doing that 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 purpose behind that. So. That's interesting, man. You were you were a talented player. You had a ton of potential, and your first like um, you know practice like that to have that that doubt, I guess, creep in. So, kind of maybe break it down, essay like what you really did step by step to to overcome that doubt. And have you ever had that doubt like once you once you got drafted? Or were you like, ah, I've, ma I've made it now. Now, now I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. Uh, so let's break it down first. Um, it's a dark hole to climb out of. I think you can yeah. probably see that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as humans, I, I say this a lot, uh, we're, we're very habitual creatures. So we all have doubts. You know what I mean? There's, there's nobody that's excluded from that conversation. Um, and then having the uh, speaking for myself the mindset that I have I'm, I'm very hard on myself and very critical of myself mm. um, I think a lot of professional athletes can can attest to that and say that's part of the reason why they have that 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 tag of a professional athlete um, because they're so critical and hard on themselves um, but I think just like David Goggins said um, it, it's 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 not as much as the the physical like okay we're doing a thousand push-ups because we want 
it's 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 i want to see how much you're willing to go through uh to to really see like hey do you actually want this because yeah yeah, yeah we did a thousand push-ups and you'll never have to do a thousand push-ups in a football game but let me tell you after <laughs> three quarters of uh, playing defense line three quarters of doing this you feel like you've done over a million and on right. top of that you're thinking okay my legs are hurt uh, I I hit my finger on a helmet I got my bell rung there's so many other factors so the simulation of of hell week is is kind of how I navigated I want to say uh my yeah. my uh my career getting to where I wanted to be um and when I say that it's after we have team runs I'm staying back to 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 sprint the stairs or do some extra sprints with uh, those core guys I spoke of it's like mm-hmm. six or seven of us uh after we have a team lift we're staying to do cardio we do team lift and cardio and we're doing more cardio you know so uh I think it was and I, I I don't advise people to go and do this but I was almost purposefully overloading my plate constantly just to 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 keep busy obviously for one because I don't know. Idle hands. I've always heard idle hands <laughs> very good, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and to stay out of trouble, all those, those, those things. Right. Um, but yeah, just, I feel like overloading my plate to, to continuously be busy, uh, to test how much I really want it. And at the end of the day as well, I always used to think of whenever you'd get punished, like, Oh, you were late for practice, go sprint. I genuinely, from my experience and, and guys I've played with, those were the guys that were usually the higher skilled guys because they got extra work in. Um, so right. I kind of thought I kind of thought of it like that. And, yeah, and use that as my my motivating factors. It's you got to be able to to push the the mind. Like again, I refer back to David Goggins. He refers to uh, you know when you've pushed to the max <clears throat> and you feel like there's nothing. Every human being has an extra twenty percent in there yeah yeah and very few get to to tap into that and it's almost like adversity is is your greatest ally like it really is is what builds you hey 100 100 percent. and it, it's a double-edged sword because you know you just obviously you can burn out from that as well if you constantly constantly doing that um but yeah yeah so what about um i i think i read you were you weren't predicted to get drafted first round but nope. you you did so um kind of talk about that feeling uh it was it was probably a little surprising uh getting drafted first round and and tell me kind of what you were feeling and what you were going through at that time yeah so uh i would agree and disagree to the surprising part um i was more I was pleasantly surprised i would say um uh, not more of like a, oh my god um i was project- predicted to go this and that um and that was really just because of my training like the training mm-hmm. regimen i was going through that specifically in that time um i met uh i met a coach uh, anthony cannon he came to coach the d-line in my third year at laurier um, yeah. and this was part of that whole transition to like you know what i i made the transition from high school to to university uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good player you know um I feel like guys talk about game planning for me, things like that. Um, so uh, when I met Anthony Cannon, that was uh, the East West Bowl year. So at the end of that year, the, the guys that are on CFL prospect list for the following year, they all get invited to the whole East West Bowl. I'm sure you're familiar with it. They played the whole game. Yeah. Uh, they got a week of coaching and that sort of thing. So um, I had a conversation with, with, with Coach Cannon after we had training camp was finished. And we played our scrimmage against Waterloo. And uh, he asked me, he's like, because me and him were always close. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, he was like the first, no, he was the second black coach I ever had um, as far as like position coach or even like head coach type of thing. So, um, and at the time, Laurier wasn't really as diverse, I would say. Uh, this was 20, no, 2012, 2012. Uh, 2013 so you know we were all making our way to Laurier but you know it was just in in patches and, and batches but um, yeah. he pulled me aside he's like hey I say I have a question for you um, you know how I feel about 
our relationship. Um, I know you're one of the team captains, um, but I have a serious question for you. Like, how great do you want to be? Mm. And I and I sat there, and obviously it was very cliche in my mind. And when you think of that 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 question, because you see it in movies all the time, like how great do you want to be? Yeah, yeah. Inspiring music. It's like dun, 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 dun. motivational punchline. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So um, I had that that brief moment, but then I I seriously like thought about the question, like how great do I want to be? Um, and I remember saying like, oh, I don't even want to be great. Like I want to be legendary. Um, And then he was like, okay, cool. So we got some work to do. And I remember from that day up until like the, like this is that day through uh, the East West Bowl up until May 12th, 2015, when I got drafted, it was just go mode. I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm get, I am getting drafted in the first round. I am doing this. I am doing that. And for years, I've been trying to 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 kind of tap back into that mode and I've come close, but it's, I don't know what it was. It was just, it was a very crazy feeling. I, I just told myself every single day, it was like, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And sure enough, I, I did it. Um, I remember getting ready for the combine. I was working three jobs. I had uh, three courses. And I was working out with the team, doing my own workouts, and then commuting to Oakville without a car uh, to do another workout. And this was this was like seven days a week for damn near t- two years. Um, and yeah, so that's why I said earlier that I wasn't really surprised. Right. I was you so- had it in your mind. You were exactly. already yeah. I, I yeah. manifested it. Um, I did the steps in order to bring that manifestation to life. Um, And I, at the time, I really wasn't aware of it. I was just wake up. Okay. I got class Uh, after class. I got to work. Okay. After work, I got film and then another workout, sleep, repeat, not a single thing. I wasn't thinking, Oh, I'm so tired. It just, I would wake up, go, go to sleep. And it was almost like, I was like turning on the button every morning, you know, pressing, pressing power and then pressing power at night. And just going through it day in day right. out. So that's really good. I I kind of wanted to you know progress through through your CFL career. So, but we're gonna jump ahead just a little bit here because yeah, you yeah, touched sure. on that. You've gone through some life looks much differently now than it did back then. Uh, oh, yeah. You have you have kids under the age of five. You know, <laughs> happily married. Um, can when when that happens, like. It's it, when life looks differently like that. Now, now you got kids to worry about. Now you got a family. Can you still be an animal on the field? Can you still have that that instinct to just like, I'm gonna do whatever the f it takes to win? Yeah, honestly, I um, like I said earlier, I've been trying to find a way to tap back into that mode, and uh, I think, I think. Uh, my kids, looking at them, that's what was inside me that I tapped into, mm. you know, in a sense. Um, I look at them and it's just, I have to go. I, I need to get this. I need to do this. This is going to happen. I will get here. I will do this. Um, and, and I think that having those experiences as well, um, just being sure to 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 tap into your internal self is is key um, because you've done it before, right? So right. Uh, if you have the ability to do it, right? If yeah. you've done it once, do it again. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just got to find a way to do it. So you get drafted, you play pro. What's was it like? Holy shit! This is the, way different. Or, or were you already at that point in in your skill level, your career, that you were like, no, I man, I can compete with these guys. I'm I'm ready. Mentally, you think that, yeah, yeah. 100%. Mentally, you're you're like, man, especially getting, and I'm gonna be completely completely honest, especially getting drafted in the first round, <laughs> you're over the moon. Like, hey, right. I'm the first rounder. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to be. 
and a little and a little part of you is expecting like hey because i got drafted in the first round i'm going to play you know right. what i mean so yeah you kind of have all those those things in the back of your mind or not even the back the forefront of your mind yeah. um because you've put in all this work uh you've you've proven to your peers and yourself that hey through the combine and the draft process like i've shown you this is what i i, I deserve and this is uh this is where I, I'm supposed to be. Mm. So let's get it, you know? Um, and I remember going into training camp with that mindset. And you almost, <clears throat> you almost forget about, uh, I mean, at least I did. Uh, I kind of forgot about the fact that we'd have American players coming up as well. Right. Um, and some of these American players have, all, like, even though they're, they're labeled as a rookie, some of these guys have played, uh, either at, uh, they've had a, a training camp with the Seahawks or they've had two years with the Chiefs or they've been with the right, three, right. four, five years, but because they're this is the first time they crossed the border, they're a rookie. So <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in rookie camp. I'm, yeah. what am I now, 22 years old, 22 years old, looking across the room and I'm seeing guys are like 28. He's considered a rookie. He played with Arizona for about three years. He's won a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking at yeah. these caliber guys. Tom, Tom Brady's going to come to the CFL <laughs> next year and be a rookie again. He actually would, though. And yeah. that's, that's, that's the crazy part, right? Um, yeah. So I'm looking across the room. I'm thinking, like, what the hell am I going to do here? Uh, obviously, you still have all these, these other things in the forefront of your mind. Like, I'm supposed to be here. I did this. I did that. I'm a first rounder. I got drafted. I'm Canadian. I, I, but then you get on the field and it's like, okay, we're all just playing football. You right. Know what I mean? Simplify it. Simple play. He, okay. Yeah. He's played with the chiefs. He's played with this. He's played with that. But at the end of the day, when I, when I broke it all down, the X's and O's are still the X's and O's. Um, but I will admit the, 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 the advantage is, is obvious. You know, they play at a higher level. Um, football means more in certain certain uh, parts of the world um and that happens to be where they're from um so a lot of factors but at the end of the day uh, i think it's 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 been rumored and it's it's talked about all the time uh that the the, the skill difference isn't there's not a, a big skill gap so you know um from my experience and i would say that is that is very factual so let's kind of talk about the difference between the CFL and NFL. Did you ever have an opportunity to go down there or ever uh, look at, at that option? Yeah. So after my third year in the league, I played one year, I played one year and a training camp with BC. And then I, I had made a switch to Saskatchewan, played two years of Sask and, uh, I had an opportunity to get a workout with the Tampa near Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Um, so I went out there for a week. It was like a couple days, um, but I left on Thursday, came back Saturday. Excuse me. I was the only D lineman, um, but I, I had a workout with them and it went well, it went really well. And then some, uh, some external circumstances kind of cut it short. Uh, but I'm very happy for the opportunity that I that I had with that. And what's the difference, like, like in in skill level between CFL NFL playing down there? If I'm being honest, uh, from honest. my experience and what I saw, there's not much. It's yeah. really just for every one superstar we have out here, or every one uh, freak athlete we have out there. There's like five to ten down there and, right. and that is that's just really the main difference um a big factor in that is the population density you know there's right. so many more people in the states than there are in canada by default for sure and by default, so and it's like nigeria and soccer football down in the states is yeah it's all it's, they it's all they talk about it's all they talk about it's all they do you see it on you see it on social media like these little tykes with there looks like hundred pound helmets just running around. You, know? <laughs> you don't see it much out here. You see that with like hockey or soccer, like you see all the tykes running around. But one day, one day we'll get there. You know, <laughs> and it's it's huge at a high school level. Like some of those yeah. small 
to the states and like the high school players are are getting treated like celebrities and yeah oh yeah stadiums are are packed to watch a high school game yeah yeah guys that movie so what was it friday night lights or something was actually based <laughs> off of a, a true story man or yeah, like a, yeah, a, true, yeah. a, a true high school football team yeah it's crazy that culture yeah. there it's, it's 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 amazing i definitely want to experience it one time um I, i've never been to like a high school game i think the i went to had a cousin that was playing at penn state and they yep. had like a spring exhibition game and the stadium was packed people were tailgating and i'm looking nice. around like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's five dollars a ticket to go watch the Dinos play here. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've had a few injuries over over your career. Kind of talk about because confidence is a major factor in being successful in especially athletics. Mm-hmm. And when we get injured, it really just chips away at that confidence yeah. to to get back out there and and compete at the same level. So talk about kind of what your mindset is going, you know, when you get injured and then to, to come back from an injury and, and really try and be stronger than you were when, when you went in. Mm-hmm. Uh, injuries, man. Uh, I've definitely had my fair share of them. Um, and for any young guys that are listening, get it, get it handled as soon as possible. You, you're only young once. Right. Your youth right. is so, so precious, precious. And um, as soon as you find out or as soon as you think something's wrong, just go get it checked out. And oh, another thing also, get a second or third opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have to, have to. Um, we're all humans, man. We all make mistakes. And uh, it's nothing nothing against doctors or, or the medical health professionals, but at the end of the day, if you if you're only relying on one perspective or one person's idea or how they operate, right, then you know you're, you're really just cutting yourself short. Um, so I would we say, get three, four opinions on getting our car repaired, but we'll only <laughs> one, one op- opinion on getting a ACL repaired. Exactly right. Um, so just definitely treat that with uh, with with caution and care, but man injuries are it's something that you you go into it obviously knowing it's like okay it's a possibility uh, mm-hmm. sport but especially football um, it's a it's a gladiator sport you're running at full speed uh, against somebody another person that's running at full speed you're both providing for your families you're both trying to make a living you're both you know what I mean so yeah. It's and your mom's of... in the stands going, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally, right? Um, yeah. So you know, hey, if I'm playing X amount of years, nobody, nobody beats football. You can't, you can't beat football. Just like you can't beat life. You can't beat uh, sports. You're going to get injured, uh, whether it's at the beginning, the middle, or the end of your career. Um, so having that mindset going into it, that was a, that's obviously huge. You need to come with, yeah. come to that understanding. Uh, otherwise you're in for it. Um, cause even with that mindset, it's a dark, dark place. Right. So <laughs> SA, how do you build, and this maybe goes back to, you know, you trying to get back to, to really, you know, that hundred percent focus, what do you do on a daily basis to build confidence? to build your uh, mindset around winning on, on the field. And like, do you do visualization? Do you do meditation? Do you do anything like that? What, what's kind of your routine on a daily basis? Uh, So I, uh, through the years, I've, I've had a number of mentors. um, Some that I still keep in contact with every once in a while, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever case may be. Um, Enoch Mwamba, he, uh, he, he told me once upon a time, because uh, we, we kind of grew up together as well, he, he told me that you got to celebrate yourself. Mm. Uh, you got to throw on your highlight tape and watch yourself be great. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I one, if you go to my YouTube search history right now, you will see my own name in there. And you, you, I just got to watch and see. Like, you got to remind yourself. Because like I said earlier, as humans, we, that, that, that sense of doubt 
regardless of where you are in life, it's going to creep in, uh, whether yeah. it creeps in and stays momentarily, stays uh, for an hour, two hours, three hours, a minute, two seconds, it's going to come. Um, so you got to counterbalance that. You got to counteract it. You got to build your own confidence. You got to be your own cheer, your biggest, your own biggest fan. Right. I think as athletes, we, we too often think of, well, I shouldn't say athletes, humans, we think of past losses too often creep back and, and allow that to predict our future. So I actually do the same thing. I have a, my goals binder and a third page, I have a winning resume and it's all my wins, uh, as an athlete and now in business, but I read that every day. Um, so th that's cool that I, I would. Apparently wasn't good enough to have a highlight reel on YouTube, but you know, <laughs> that's I mean, good. But it's true, right? Like, yeah. you know, thinking about your past wins, that's, yeah. that's, you know, if you're only dwelling on, on your losses or your injuries or uh, that's for sure going to hold you back. Yeah. 100%. So here's, here's kind of a loaded question and, and let's hope that no coaches listen to my podcast. Uh, how much, <laughs> In success, how much is coaching? How much is the player? Like really, when it when it comes down to it, can a great player still become great if he doesn't have a good coach? Or can a decent player become great if he has a better coach? Yeah, you're right about the loaded question. Uh, <laughs> I want to say both can be true. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, and obviously, it depends on the sport but I play football. So when I think of football, I was actually thinking about this the other day. In my 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. So in my seven seasons, I would have probably played with, give or take, 100 other guys. Right. So over the span of seven seasons, that's 700 different players not everybody responds to the same the same things right um so there that both has to be true yeah you know um so yeah that's, that's how i think about it i think there's just too many people for for there to be one way and that's how i think about everything in life there's too many people in the world for there just to be one way to do things um and be right and i think it's it all comes down to perspective and how you learn or how you operate and and, and kind of like that yeah yeah i agree i think there's for sure and and this comes from a parent perspective right like you know there's for sure got to be something in the athlete that pushes and they want something bigger yeah, but then there's got to be the guidance that that get you know helps helps get them there i've always told my boys like if you want to play professionally absolutely like 100 percent, i'll be behind you but that's a different commitment level from yourself and from from mom and dad to get you there and if you want to just play for fun then that's awesome as well and and I'll 100 support that so it's it, it it almost takes both but it's almost like it's triggered from the athlete hey oh yeah definitely yeah at the end of the day if if you don't want it for yourself <laughs> you can't you know what I mean you can't it's like yeah. the saying you can't you can you can't force you can bring a horse to water but you can't force him to drink right, right? totally and I think I've run into a couple guys and I, for maybe only a handful of guys that made it to the professional level. And they're like, you know what? I don't even want to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know? Right. Yeah. So, you know, totally. It happens, but it's very, it's very rare. There's just so much time and effort you, you put into it. So SA, you did get a great cup with the stamps. Yeah. Talk about that, man. Very few people get to experience that having a championship, having what was that experience like for you? That Knowing was, like sorry, go ahead. you've dedicated your whole life, right? To getting there. Like that's, that's why you play. You, you want a championship. You don't play football to make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars at the end of the day. It's because you love the game you, and exactly. you want to win a championship. It's about winning. How, how good was that feeling and, and that experience? Oh man. Uh, to first say that was my first championship win like ever of any sports, whether any be, level, any level, any sport. That was my first, like, Hey, you are the best in the entire league. So that was, uh, 
that was I was on top of the world. Uh, that's my, cool. My, <laughs> My uh, my my close friends are not really my, everybody on Instagram who remembers that night knows that I had uh, I was on top of the world for sure. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> uh, as we touched earlier, I was injured for like the duration of the playoffs, so I was kind of navigating through that uh, that mental that mental that mental battle. Right. Um, but it was it was a huge relief. I, I ended up, like you said, nobody really plays. You don't play football to, to, to be Bill Gates rich. You don't play mm-hmm. football to, to, to own X amount. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't yeah. play football. For that. It's the love of the game. And a couple million in the bank account is fine. Like, you know, you know. yeah, a couple, you know, <laughs> play NFL, you know, that's, that's, that's yeah. how that's the route. But, um, you, uh, you play for the championships. Yeah. You play, for a lot of guys play for the camaraderie they love right. the brotherhood aspect of hey i'm at battle i'm giving my 100% uh i, I want to give up but the guy beside me is doing the exact same thing and he's not giving up you know so that that whole mentality that sparks something in, in a lot of people mm. um, and and even for me uh, i have a quote that i live by or a bible scripture sorry i have it on my my forearm uh it's proverbs 27 verse 27 verse 17 um and it says uh as iron sharpens iron so one brother sharpens another mm, um so like you know what i mean it's it's just yeah. it's one of those things that um that that brings us together uh, to play the sport that we love so when i won the first thing i thought of was like man all those years all the blood, all the sweat, all the tears, all of like the DNA that I had shed and left yes. on all these fields yes. over the years has finally come together into this mm-hmm. one ring or this yeah. one moment, really. Um, and I remember the first person I ran to when we won was my brother. He was uh, he came to the game with my dad. It was out in Edmonton, and they were sitting right behind us. And I turned around and I put my hands up and I was like, "Hey, uh-huh. you, you got, can I cuss on you?" Oh yeah, yeah. We fucking did it. We yeah. Did it. <laughs> I was like, we fucking did it. He came, give me a big hug. Um, and then my D line coach, my dad, and it was, it was just, I can't, I can't really describe it. That's the best I can really put to it. But it was like, fuck, finally, all yeah. this shit that I've been through, <laughs> yeah. all the yeah. stuff that I put myself, my body, my mind. It's like, okay, I finally got it. And so, that, let me ask you a follow up question: Was it worth it? Hundred percent. Yeah. One thousand percent. I love it. Yeah. Okay, man. I want to wrap up here. There's a a young essay growing up. He wants to play pro football. It's his dream. He wants to dedicate. What advice do you tell him, man? Like, how do you? How does he get there? Just stay, stay the course. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Stay focused. Don't lose lose track of what you're doing and, and have fun. Uh, that's the biggest thing I can remember from, from those times. Um, even like through the combine through injuries at the end of the day. And a lot of people that know me that really know me, know this about me, whether I'm having the worst day ever, or the best day ever, you're going to hear like my signature laugh at least once or twice throughout the day. So um, have fun, keep laughing and don't skip any of the workouts just keep going love it man you just got to be willing to to just keep keep going no matter what Mm -hmm. just keep driving i love it well sa i commend you on an incredibly successful career so far i hope you get to uh, put a few more rings on before you you tie it up uh i appreciate your time this morning it's been a lot of fun we've had a few laughs uh but we've also learned a lot uh into the mindset and and you know, not only coming overcoming adversity, but really, you know, what it takes to to grind. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You really got to have that commitment level. So I appreciate your expertise and and having you on the show, man. We'll we'll jump off live here and and wrap up. All right, awesome. Again, it was a pleasure. Thanks, man.